Cybersecurity is one of the most important industries nowadays as our society becomes more and more dependent on ICT than ever before. In a world that evolves and becomes smarter, cybersecurity attacks are increasing in scale, sophistication, and impact. At the same time, globally, we notice shortage on cybersecurity skills and higher demand of cybersecurity professionals. However, in this skill shortage, one can highlight a more prominent issue. This of lack of diversity in cybersecurity. Currently, less than 30% of cybersecurity professionals in Europe are women, whereas only 20% of the graduates from cybersecurity programs in the EU are girls. I am Dimitra Liberi, leader of the awareness raising and education team at ENISA the European Union Agency for Cybersecurity. And together with my colleagues, experts in cybersecurity, we will discuss about the female role in cybersecurity and their experience. Today, we have with us Monica Adamczyk, cybersecurity expert, focusing on cybersecurity for artificial intelligence, and Vasiliki Gog, cybersecurity expert, focusing on cybersecurity certification, both ladies have been following closely and contributing to the European policy activities on cybersecurity. Welcome, ladies. Could you please briefly share with us your personal story in the field of cybersecurity? Monica. Uh, thank you, Dimitra. It's a pleasure to be here. So, uh, my story is a quite a long one. I, long, long time ago, I was a psychologist. But I discovered a passion for first IT, general IT knowledge, uh, when I took a simple programming course uh, at one of the universities that I was getting my secondary degree. And uh, as I work in the IT field, uh, first as a software engineer and then as an architect and a project manager, I saw more and more need for cybersecurity because you cannot have any IT or digital systems without security. So. Uh, given the demand for, for, the, for the expertise, uh, I began uh, educating myself and uh, after just, you know, a uh, number of years, I've transitioned into cybersecurity. That's how I become expert in this area. So, so this is me uh, and Vasiliki. I'm very curious to hear how you got into cybersecurity. Uh, thank you, Monica. Th thanks for the opportunity to discuss about this. Thank you, Dimitra. Uh, I'm originally an electrical engineer and uh, my PhD was on medical applications and crypto processors and smart cards. Uh, but I was working for the last 20 years in the field of electronic communications and telecommunications policy and regulation. So uh, I was involved in different stages for uh, major electronic communications policy initiatives like the EIDAS framework, the electronic communications code, the NIS directive. And I uh, was also the director of the telecommunications uh, division for the Greek National Regulatory Authority. So I, I was in, involved in a live and kicking part of the telecommunications market. And the whole switch happened like uh, a couple of years ago when I started working on with 5G cybersecurity uh, as part of my work in a group of European regulators. And then I realized that I started liking cybersecurity. Well, more or less, this is the story. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and eventually, uh, what, uh, what motivated you? Uh, which aspects of uh, the work do you find appealing? And what actually, uh, dragged you into the cybersecurity journey, Vasiliki. Yeah, well, to follow up on what I started saying, uh, like a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, which like happened to coincide with the pandemic, uh, I, I realized that uh, uh, there was a, a violent digital transformation of, the, of our work, of our universe, of the way we, we live and the way we interact. So it was without saying that cybersecurity is a key element on, on our quality of life, on, uh, on the way we define peace or war. So because every, 
everything is virtually going digital now. So the security of this new habitat is vital for us. And that's why I started being more and more involved in that. And I, I realized that I really wanted to switch to learn more about cybersecurity to start working on this further. Monica, what about you? Uh, you know, my experience is uh, kind of very similar. I've been, you know, uh, witness uh, first, I had first hand experience and been witness of, of uh, negative consequences of insufficiently secured digital systems. Uh, I've seen that this is a field that requires uh, an ongoing attention and uh, continuous learning about the field. And to me, this was, you know, the, the things that were basically very appealing. I'm the type of a person that I likes to learn all the time. So uh, because of my interest in the technical aspects of uh, our everyday, you know, life or professional or personal, uh, I basically uh, decided to transition exclusively into cybersecurity. And I've been, you know, enjoying this for, for a number of years right now. But I'm sure that the road wasn't paved uh, with roses. So which were the challenges that you faced uh, in this journey? Oh, there were plenty of, of stones on my road. Uh, as you know, as I mentioned the same, uh, there's plenty of, of challenges in the cybersecurity because of being a dynamic field. And, uh, you know, you have to be always uh, at the top of the of the of the subject, at the top of what's happening, and uh, well, you know, uh, it is interesting. It is also, you know, demanding and sometimes exhausting. Uh, also, from my personal experience, uh, I've worked for many years in the United States, and the situation was that for many many years, I was uh, often the only woman on a technical team. Uh, not always appreciated uh, because the stereotype was that if I'm, you know, a, a woman, then I am probably, you know, a support person or a QA person and not a high-end uh, experienced professional. However, uh, on the positive side, things, of course, uh, change, I would say, over the last uh, five, maybe even ten years. Uh, I especially enjoy uh, a very well balanced uh, gender environment here at ENISA, where I have a pleasure to work with many female professionals and sharing exchange information uh, in this field. So, so that's that's my side of the let's say the less glamorous uh, uh, side of of cybersecurity. And what about you, Vasiliki? I'm afraid I don't have a glamorous side either. So, in general, I, I agree with you that uh, the gender balance has been quite uh, getting better during the last years, and this is a relief for all of us, not only for cybersecurity, but for technical experts as such, because balance uh, is, is something good to have anyway. The challenge for me uh, is here now, because I'm, I'm starting to study something new like cybersecurity certification, and working outside my comfort zone, which is, is somehow rejuvenating because it's like I'm 25 years old again and things are not totally clear and settled down. So it's it's really invigorating in a way, but it can be quite exhausting as well. So this is a challenge I had, but uh, I have to admit I quite like it. So um, as a closing statement, I would like to ask you to give a piece of advice to these uh, girls, uh, ladies that want to follow cybersecurity or are thinking of following cybersecurity, but not only, basically to, to everyone. So what uh, uh, would you advise them, uh, Vasiliki? Uh, I would say that, uh, again, yeah, it, you're right, it's a message to practically everybody, anybody. It's never too late to start something new and to start learning once you find some uh, something useful in your field. So it's never too late for a career switch once you're up to it and you, you feel you can start working again on this. Actually, it can really make you feel and, uh, younger and make your, keep your mind uh, alive. That, so this is the advice, never to worry about our age or, or whether it is too late to start something new. Monica? 
I very much uh, second your opinion. I would say that even if you have absolutely nothing with cybersecurity right now, or even are not a technical person, uh, just try something simple. Just look for an online course that maybe talks about the basics of the cybersecurity and see if you like it. Uh, if you happen to know someone who works in this field, maybe have a few conversations with this uh, the person, or even if they are open and you have some time, see if you can do, you know, maybe a short internship. You may discover, you know, what happens to me when I was transitioning from psychology to IT, that you actually have a passion for this uh, area and that you actually are very good at those things. And uh, who knows, maybe you will actually decide that this is the career that you want to follow. It doesn't matter whether you are just, you know, uh, finishing your studies or uh, approaching retirement. Uh, you can always try to switch into cybersecurity. Uh, as Dimitra has mentioned at the very beginning, there's a huge, huge demand for professionals in this field, and there's plenty of jobs for anyone who's willing to learn and develop in this area. So that's advice from me. Could not agree Ladies, more. Thank you so much for the inspiring talk uh, over coffee. Um, this uh, was uh, one more episode of uh, the ENISA role models uh, discussions. Stay tuned for more that will come soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dimitri. It was a pleasure to speak with you and Vasiliki. Same here. It was indeed a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity.